Hello and welcome to final round coverage from the Santa Cruz Masters Cup. We've got the back nine for our lead card. We're going to see who takes this tournament home. Big Sexy Commentary is here with you again, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Colling. And as I stated in the front nine, we've got some players who have some Masters Cup experience here. We've got two former champions, Philo Brathwaite, who's a runner-up, and we've got the young kid, Noah Mensma, who's shown some promise. Only one stroke back of Josh Anton to the front nine. Playing well, but um, going to have to make some big strokes here uh, to close in the gap and if he wants to get a shot at the win. Definitely. Hole 10, par 3, 415 feet in this grove of eucalyptus trees. Got to throw a huge hyzer. So you you got to have the right wind conditions or a super big arm and overstable disc to attack this into a headwind. And that's what we're going to be playing into. We have a headwind. You might not see it here, but trust us, it's there. And Noah's got this a little bit too high. Maybe not quite enough power there, and it's going to leave him probably like 65, 70. And Anton having to keep this thing low to be able to get the distance necessary. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. All the way up there. And that 415 doesn't quite explain the distance properly because it is a little bit uphill. Yeah. <laughs> Milo giving it everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, putt. Yeah. It's a nice drive there from Philo, belting it out about 420 feet or so. On oh, pure hyzer. And was that football called? I don't know if it was called. I just heard Philo. I heard it muttered. Muttered I'm not football. Sure. I'm not sure if it was officially called. Okay. All right, well. It has to be seconded. Yep, I don't believe it was. Oh, yeah, what a putt with the awkward straddle out around the eucalyptus. Big time putt, and that's exactly what he's going to need to do if he wants to take a shot at the title. Awesome. Ricky's pretty blocked here. Oh, man. And that's a tough way to get your first miss inside the circle for the tournament. Kylo's in. Josh tapping that in, and all of a sudden, look at this here. We've got three holes in a row. Josh has made up a stroke on Ricky. That four-stroke lead that he had is pretty much all but gone. Yeah, gone quick. Hole 11, par 3, 295. This is a low ceiling shot that breaks to the right, and the pin is again perched just right there at the edge of the bunker. So Best play here is going to be the forehand taking a, a wide line and playing a skip or two over to the left side of the basket. You're also going to see some low backhand mid ranges, although that's a very difficult shot. Yeah, no doubt. Everything slopes into that bunker here. It's so, so hard to keep it from going in. Oh, just too high there, but that also looked a little inside to me. I was worried mm -hmm. about bunker on that shot, even if it had. Yeah, it's probably best case scenario. I mean, that, that makes it a lot easier to get the par. Josh going to the forehand drive, but this is severely wide. Looks like he hits a tree and stays in bounds. Oh, yes. We're seeing it, folks. The Philo Sodder, I'm telling you, he brings it out every once in a and while. He can throw it. Yeah, he doesn't give himself enough credit for it. I've heard him say, that, oh, I'm not good at that shot. And I haven't really ever seen him throw a bad one. Yeah. Come the join us, Philo. You got you to gotta get in on this, man. It's fun. <laughs> and... Ricky's known to th throw a few sidearms here and there. This looks short. Oh, okay. that's that might have been a really good tree. Because mm -hmm. if that had a little bit more energy on it, it's sandy. Yep. Heading for a sandy landing. Oh, no. Oh, wow, that is so lucky. That was very scary. <laughs> Not the upshot you're looking for. Were you, like, personally scared, or were you just sympathizing for Noah? Both. Oh, wow. Yep. That was a huge tree branch that Ricky hit there. That's opened up the opportunity there to lengthen that gap to two strokes. Oh, no. Mm. That's the danger of running that putt. 
So the sand traps here are hazards, so Philo will be playing from his lie, but with a extra stroke. Kind of a cool uh, thing, I think. You know, yeah. a little bit introduces some different strategy as compared to our normal OB rules. Yeah, I, I think hazard's a good thing. You know, we use that at the USDGC. Mm hmm. And, uh, it, you know, it's a playable surface, so we, we can play from there. Just don't go there. Yeah. Because you'll get an extra show. Yep. Hole 12, par 4, 800 feet going right and uphill and into a headwind. So this is a very, very long hole today. Players are going to throw as big of a turning, turning distance driver as they can, try to get up the hill as far as they can, because the approach has to clear two sand traps and a green. Keep in mind the cart path will be the entire way, so... This hole is playing very tough. Yeah, I think architecturally speaking, this is the most beautiful hole on the course. Ricky looking for that big turn. This looks like the wind is hammering it down a little bit, oh, but it wow. stays in bounds. Just gets around the corner. And yeah, you see that wind is really playing tricks on this lead group here. This is such a difficult hole to get a big tee shot. Um, with this wind blowing the way that it is. And a common, this is pretty nice from yeah. Josh. And keeping that disc turned over nicely. If you don't get a drive around the corner at least somewhat, forget about looking at a birdie. It's just a such a long two-shot hole. You can only cut off so much distance off this tee. And that's in position perhaps to have a long look at it, but you can see why this is the hardest hole in the course. Ricky going with a huge hyzer. Looks to have the distance. Yeah, I mean, from that distance, that's a pretty good effort. And Noah, tough position here. Trying to decide. I mean, I don't oh, really wow. even know where the safe play is. Yeah, I think that might there be it throwing is. it into That's the it. tree and yeah. dropping down. That'll work. And Philo goes with the layup. Yeah. And just out of position, it's just too far. I mean, too much danger near the green. You got the cart path, you got the bunkers, you got the green, and you got about 500 feet, maybe a little bit less than 500 feet to deal with, but a lot of different things you got to battle. Stay safe. Yeah. And still not quite as close as he'd like to be, I'm sure, but. Certainly nobody's parked. We've got some long putts for Birdie and these guys trying to salvage par. And Noah's been making use of that Nova all around very nicely. Here's Philo. Oh, man. Is this as fluffed as it looks? Oh, no. Philo wishes his disc would have flied low or. I see what you're trying to do. Thank you. I appreciate it's it. It's somewhere in there. It's I good. I appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is a tough shot, man. That just f fell out of his hand, I got to think. Yeah. Th that came out with mm -hmm. almost nothing on it. Right. Wow. <laughs> He's done it all tournament. So clean. Very smooth stroke there. And he's, I mean, that's like the fifth or sixth putt outside the circle we've seen him hit in just the last two rounds. Really in touch with that shot right now. Oh, oh man, man. so close. That would have brought the gap back down to one. Nice par from Noah. Oh, oh wow. The gap is down to one and Ricky has Man, that's a mistake, big time. And I was just about to comment on how those kind of putts can sometimes be the ones that you rush and don't quite put as much focus as you need to into it. And I didn't want to say it because it was, you know, it's Ricky putting and he's wow. not going to miss it. But. If you've played disc golf, you've missed that very putt. I mean, yeah, that's part of part of our shared experience, I think. Is yeah, don't be king an eighteen footer every <laughs> every now and then. Hole 13, par 3, 315 feet. This one plays deceptively t tough, I think. The basket is super close to this cart path, and it's on or over. So you're going to see forehands, backhand turnovers, and I 
would venture to say we might see some out of bounds. It's a very difficult grain. This looks to be in bounds. Yeah, very quality. Quite good. I just now for the first time noticed that Noah's wearing the Jomez pin on his hat. Did you notice that? I hadn't noticed that. We'll look for it. Next time I see him, that's the first thing I'm going to do. <laughs> and look at this shot drifting nicely over to the right for Josh. That's a very quality execution awesome. there. Yeah, that, that deserves a follow flight. Right down the middle of the gap the whole way, trusting that. Turn so soft. Getting the distance perfect. He's going to have about 20 feet left for his birdie. This needs some serious skips. Oh, and that, it's going to get him. Yeah. But that is so close. If yeah. That, if that hits anything not cement, mm -hmm. it's probably not making it back. Mm -hmm. Come on, negative. Come on, negative. Come on, negative. I'm guessing that means turnover. It does. Yeah, negative is the result. Yes. That's so difficult. We had three out of bounds in my group. Yeah. Can he do it again? Yep, he of can. Of course he can. Great save. I'd say one of the underrated putters on tour. Sure. Like when when the discussion of best putters on tour is discussed, I don't think that Philo is one of the first names you mention, and it should be. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely in the debate. He very methodical, has the same routine almost time after time, and and yeah, you know, gets gets good results. Three birdies and a par there, really well played. Great save from Philo. Hole 14, par four, 640 feet, mandatory tree on the left side, forcing you to stay right early. Very, very low ceiling. OB cart path down on the right side. OB sand trap short. OB green short right. You can see rollers, yeah. low backhands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's, there's several different options in the roller is really tricky because it all leads downhill towards out of bounds. If you can put a nice shot like this down, Noah's throwing a low ceiling shot. Maybe didn't quite get the distance that you'd like to see here. But um, if, if you can get over 350 feet off the tee, you're going to be in position to have a good look at your second shot. That's going to be tricky from down there. Makes the shot blind. It's hard to throw a blind shot over two different kinds of OB with a drop off behind the pin. Yeah. You might not think it'd be hard, but it actually is. <laughs> this is such a difficult hole. I mean, this this basket is well protected by that green and that sand trap. This is the tee shot they're all looking for. Yeah, that's going to leave really nothing in the way in front of Philo for his approach. There's some claps because they do not know that that is in the out-of-bounds hazard area. Such a tough green. You can either go in the sand or yeah. you can go way long. Oh, that needs to sit down, though. And that is out-of-bounds in that cart path. And really beautiful shot, but just so hard to put the brakes on. Whoa, Josh takes a seat. Well, he's just tired. Oh, and that's also out of bounds. Too much rest. Big opportunity for Philo. Oh, yeah. It's 25 feet long. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, and that's a tough break there for Noah. Such a difficult approach. Par putt comes up short. Ricky with an opportunity here to save the par and get a stroke on Josh. And just like that, he's going to have two strokes with only four holes to play. 
Philo for birdie. Yeah. Beautiful. Keeping that putting train rolling, man. There's a locomotive of outside the circle putts right now. Choo choo. <laughs> <laughs> Noah takes bogey. Josh also will take a bogey. Hole 15 is a par three, 430 feet uphill. Just a huge crush of a hyzer or a flat shot to stall. Got to clear the golf green, but more importantly, you have to clear this last bunker. That is the collection area for any shot that comes up just a little bit short. There's no real problems long of the pin, but it's not that easy to throw long of the pin. It is really, really far. This is the second hardest hole in the course. Just this distance, the green, the slope, and the wind just all combined to make a really tricky hole. This looks like it's going to be safe, but not super close to the pin. Wow, oh, wow, that came up shorter than I thought. I thought yeah. he was going to go over that ridge. That's really not bad. That's probably 35. And the foot fault was called on Ricky. He has had some issues this round, keeping his foot not passing that line there. And it was seconded by the group. And this is the first time I've actually seen this. A foot fault has been called, which this year, as yeah. you may know, means an automatic stroke penalty. But Ricky is also in the hazard area. Another penalty. That's a two-stroke penalty. Yeah. And those penalties are both added. Yeah, so he's putting for bogey. He's putting for a four. Very big time right now. And if Josh can throw a good drive here and give himself a look for, at the birdie, they could be tied up. And he does just that. What a crush. Wow, that's a huge shot there. And that's going to be a little bit... Scary, but that's inside the circle, and that's a big opportunity right there. Yeah, it's something I guess Ricky's going to need to kind of take a look at it. Wow, good run. On the practice screen a little bit, you know, work on his footwork because I know he's not trying to footfall, you know, right. but he's clearly a couple times here is kind of <laughs> oh, look at line. this. Wow. And best case scenario, Ricky has a putt just to stay tied for the lead. Oh, setting up the fist pump. Yeah, Josh knows the situation. That's a huge putt. Wow. Mm. File has forgot what it feels like to not have it go in the basket, but it's a very real feeling. Noah's in for his par. How close is Ricky now? It looked like he got to the front edge of the bunker. I don't think he has that okay, far to go. Pretty close. But this is just a stay tied. With oh, oh hi there. <laughs> Wow. And just like that, two-stroke swing and with three holes to go, man, we've got a very exciting finish coming up. Yeah, we do. Hole 16, par four, 755. This is a new tee pad this year. Opens up the tee shot quite a bit more, forcing a big, long turnover. And then the upshot is tricky because while the cart path is safe here, that access road, you see that vintage truck driving down, is uh, going to be OB. So you got to stay inside that, and this green really gets skinny here at the end. Again, the cart path can be your worst enemy here. If you take that big skip on the approach, could be gone. And this tee pad has been moved this year. Um, Last year, there was a few rollers that got into the crowd, and a couple of people were actually hit. No one was hurt, fortunately, but they we're down here off to the right now, which made a little bit more of a turnover shot, less of a... Well, it seemed like last year was more of a roller play, and now this is more of a just get one down there as far as you can. But looks like the crowd control issue hasn't <laughs> been resolved necessarily. It makes the whole play a lot longer overall, I think, the, mm -hmm. the new tee pad. This has got potential. Is it too too much turnover, though? Yeah, and good kick out there because that is the land of no goodness. I don't know. Yeah, Just that's bad. a great name for it. Yeah, the land of no goodness. It's a horrible place. <laughs> yeah, it really is. You do not want to go in the land of no goodness. That'll work. And Ricky's going to have basically a... Oh, they think that that's out of bounds. Yeah, I saw I saw some spectators just freaking out about that, and I was like, "Well, it's 
decent, but I think yeah. that is what they think. They think that that's sure. going to be OB. I can see that's kind of confusing. Yeah. And this is going to come up a bit short of those two eucalyptus trees, but that's going to be looking at, no, I'd say 35 feet or so for birdie. Noah going that trusty green. A little short. Wow, big high hyzer. Can this get through the trees? Absolutely. I think it can. What a shot. Interesting line there. Wow. That really brought trees into play that I did not think were in the uh, in the equation. Ricky has a putt to keep the tie going. Yeah, but the pressure's on Ricky here because Josh is just parked. Mm, great run. That must feel good. Obviously not Philo's best round. He was only sitting at minus two, but the putts. Yeah. I mean, he think is. Think about what would be happening right now if those putts weren't dropping. Yeah, he's saving himself here. And big time putt there from Ricky just off to the left side, but that nose down just doesn't care what side of the basket it hits. Two to go. Two players are sitting at 20 under par. Hole 17, man. We're back. Par three, 342 feet. Going straight ahead. There is an OB on the left side. There's OB access road long and an elevated basket. Also, doesn't this one play river? Yes. So you have to make sure you clear that sidewalk or else you're in trouble. It's a very, uh, so many different things that can go wrong in this hole. And, and all out of bounds go straight to a drop zone. Trust me, I would know. <laughs> Don't. <gasps> That's going straight to said oh, drop zone. Oh my goodness. And just like that, all the power is in Ricky's hands here. Keep one in bounds and most likely you're going to have at least one stroke going into the last hole. But to take the pressure away from Ricky so that he doesn't have to birdie. True. I mean, Josh could still make the putt, though. The drop zone is probably 40 feet. Yeah, but it is an it's elevated pin. Tough putt, but a makeable putt. And Ricky, look at that. He's playing safe golf. They're not attacking the green. Knowing the situation is, is going to be, you know, pretty difficult for Josh to save that par. Uh-oh, Noah. That's gotten away from him. Yeah, that's going to be out of bounds. Unless, yeah, it's going to be... So, Ricky is not even going to entertain the thought of running it. Just puts it under the basket, playing match play at this point. Probably the right play. Wow, Philo. Lays that one up in here. This is the putt. Mm. Oh, it's just never high enough. Right on line. Same for Noah and... Just like that, Rick's going to have one stroke coming into a very difficult finishing hole. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it's a hole that Ricky's actually birdied famously with the raptor legs coming out of this. Two years in a row, he's raptor legged it in, so it's not good for Josh. No, you don't want to be out there in Raptorville. Hole 18, par 3, 485 downhill, OB water on the left, OB path on the right. Just a huge flat to hyzer distance driver here. Even though it is downhill, it still, it plays long. Philo and Noah have a battle of their own, both sitting at 16 under par. And this the, the difference in pay between Third and fourth place when you're up there at the top is big. So this is a big hole for these two guys. Mm -hmm. 
Ricky just needs to get inbounds, put the pressure on Josh. He's done that. Yeah, he's inbounds. And he's got a putt, mm -hmm. though it's very raptory. Yep, that's that's raptor leg range. Josh has to put this one close to put any pressure on Rick. Yeah, you gotta get closer than Ricky and no no. Oh that's, this is this looks water. That, yeah, that's that way sealed. out of water. That should pretty much end it. Yeah. He's not gonna be closer than fifty feet, I wouldn't think. Oh Noah is pretty high here. That's a sit. That's also going to find the water. Mm. But Noah's going to have to, it's going to be finishing with back to back bogeys, most likely. There's Josh laying it up. Noah 55 feet away to maintain the tie with Philo. Oh, no! Wow. What an incredible effort. Nicely played tournament, though. And look at Paul Macbeth. 10 oh. down for the round, 17 down for the event. And that is going to put him in third place as Philo lays up. Ricky lays it up. Nice and easy. And this putt for Josh's bogey. And but it's the putt to beat Macbeth. It is the putt to beating Beth, and so Josh will take second place solo. But now, the two-time champion of the Masters Cup, Ricky Wysocki, and something like six out of the past seven years, the winner of this event has gone on to become the world champion. So we'll see if that trend continues this year. Wow, great play by Ricky. Good tournament from all these guys, really. It was a pleasure to watch them. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> it you know, it definitely deflated me a little bit. I had to build the momentum with the putt on the hole before, and Josh made a long putt on that hole. So it was a two-stroke swing with the foot fault. So, you know, it changed the dynamics to, to be in Josh's favor. And and so, you know, that was the biggest thing about that hole that, that really uh, was hard to come overcome. And I was just glad that I didn't let it get to me too much. You can tell, you know, Ricky's a pro. He, I don't think he's out there saying he never foot faulted. He knows, you yeah. know, he made a mistake and he described it in a calm way that, you know, he had to overcome that obstacle that he kind of put there for himself. So congratulations to him staying even keeled despite that. Well, there it is, folks. Ricky Wysocki, 2018 Masters Cup champion. Phenomenal play. Excellent coverage there from Definitely. all the players and... Thank you so much for coming out and listening to us talk about it. We'll see you in San Francisco. Hey guys, thanks for watching the coverage from Santa Cruz. I got a nice little orange Star Destroyer here. If you comment on the front nine video, you might win it. Signed by Big, signed by me. Make sure you're subscribed also. I've got one for the back nine. I wasn't gonna show you, I was gonna keep it for myself because these orange ones are super sweet. But if you do comment, if you do subscribe, like the, like the videos, it really does mean a lot to us. We really appreciate it. It helps us keep going and bringing you guys the disc golf coverage that you want so much. So thank you very much. And make sure you comment. Give yourself a chance to win this.